what is good we're back and today we're going to take you through a little 24 rookie mock super flex tight end premium going to do it a little different this time in this one instead of alternating picks between the three of us we got the patrons and they helped us fill out this mock so we're going to break it down a little bit we're going to maybe go about six picks at a time and then kind of discuss what was going on there so we got austin over there how you doing austin good man happy to be here happy to talk some ball how you doing casey good man and we got we got matt back how you doing mr mormon feeling better feeling better back and better than ever all right so let's jump into this and discuss here so right off the rip we got marvin harrison going one one we got caleb williams going one two drake may going one three Jaden daniels going one four malik neighbors one five which was your boy austin's pick and then Roma Dunze going one six. So some would call that chalk. That's essentially some chalk. We you know we we know that Austin is on record. You're you you're you're taking Marvin Harrison one one pretty much regardless, unless maybe you have a very quarterback needy super flex team. But for the most part, you're pretty comfortable regardless with with Marvin Harrison Jr. as the one one, right? That's right, man. Draft for value, trade for need, rinse and repeat. I love Marv. I lo I was surprised to see Marv here at the one one. I and I love it, but I was I was very surprised, man. I feel like most people are are gonna confidently pull trigger on Caleb Williams at the one one, and that's fine, man. Like he, it's gonna be great. So, yeah, I mean, you can you could throw those guys in the same tier at this point if you if you really wanted to. Um, and then that's fair. Probably the next three guys could potentially four guys depending on who you are. Maybe five if you're feeling frisky in the next tier. Um, you know, I don't know if, if anybody has a preference between Drake May and, and Jaden Daniels here next. I don't know if maybe any, you know, since you're taking Marvin Harrison at the one, one, or do you take is Malik neighbors jump both of those guys for you, Austin, or, or are you taking the, the, the next two quarterbacks? Yeah. So I, ha that's exactly right. I do have Malik neighbors as my one Oh three in super flex. I like him more than the other two quarterbacks in Drake may and Jaden Daniels. Um, no, I cannot put him in front of, uh, Caleb Williams, however. So I'm very, very bullish on the, the top, the top tier, you know, talent, top tier receiving prospects in this class. Are neighbors and Harrison jr. In the same tier for you or is Harrison, are they, are they each kind of in their own tier? No, they're in the same tier, okay. man. I think neighbor. I think neighbors is that good. Okay. I just, I just feel confident in having Caleb over neighbors. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I still would take Drake May. I think over Jaden Daniels at this point. I mean, you could make the argument mm -hmm. that Jaden Daniels' fantasy upside is is probably a little better than Drake May's. I think Drake May might play the position a little better, but J Jaden Daniels is absolutely awesome at running with the ball in his hands. You know, we've had a couple of these last few years and Jaden Daniels is right up there with those guys. I would say, you know, maybe the biggest thing from watching neighbors and Brian Thomas is Jaden Daniels takes a lot of shots, like a big, big shots. And the frame isn't, isn't super sturdy. Like he's, he's not, he's not a, right. He's not a small guy necessarily, but he's not, you know, big. I, I feel like he's tall, but he's not like, he's not thick. Right. Right. But man, he is he is a lot of fun to watch. So if you wanted to argue Jaden Daniels over Drake May, I can't really argue with you. May's got some wheels, though. I think one of those years oh, he had yeah. 700 oh, yards rushing. I think it was last year. Um, so, you know, I think a lot of the times we see those guys with those kind of rushing upside and it doesn't show up game to game. But, you know, you'll see guys like Burrow using it and Stroud using it from time to time. And, and it can build you, you know, a, you know, a nice little floor from week to week every once in a while. But you don't see it all the time like Rodgers was kind of that in-between guy where in his prime you'd see a little bit more run in each game um, so you know I don't know if it'll quite be there with May like we want to but the athleticism is there you know I don't, I'm not going to comp any of these guys to Brock Purdy but Brock Purdy's in trouble he can get you 30 40 yards rushing picking up an extra first down extend a drive for you and that's just to keep your offense on the field I think that's huge um, to not necessarily be a statue back there. It was 900 yards last year. It 900 was 899 yards rushing. Yards rushing. Mm. He did almost 600 this past year. That's, so you know, not not to be slept on, but that's nowhere near Jaden Daniels' level of, of sure. Rushing. But I think it's but I think it's probably a step ahead of Caleb Williams, though. Yeah, that, that's that, sure, sure. But I know you know as as we go on, I would I'd I'd put probably Marvin Harrison and Caleb, and then I'd probably put these at least next three guys in a tier and then maybe Rome and Bowers in the next tier down here. Obviously we didn't get to Bowers yet, but um, you know, 
some shade being thrown on Rome a lot of places. So the analytical community is really hating some of the some of the metrics there, especially from the, the 21 and 22 season. Um, and a lot of people point to just the coordinator and the coaching staff was there. You know, DeBoer didn't get there and the wide receiver coach and the you know offensive coordinator all changing over. Um, and then once that kind of happened and, and uh, Penix got there, you know, I, 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 you're not going to get any Rome slander out of me. I, I think he's awesome. I think he's tailor made to be a, a one in an offense and a one in fantasy football. Is he, is he lightning fast? No, but he's, he's so polished in so many uh, different aspects of being an elite wide receiver and the speed is good enough. It's not, you know, he's not going to run a four, three, but you know, if it, if it was, Four four, I don't think is out of the question for him, uh, but you know, if it was four five, that doesn't make me be like, oh, I'm out on run. Like I, I've seen everything I need to see from him. He can separate from you. He's a route running. He's very good at route running. And then if he has to be in the contested situation, he's really good at that too. He don't get the him being in some contested situations twisted with he can't separate yeah. because he can separate. This isn't this isn't. Uh, Who's the dude from this isn't Nikhil Harry all over, uh, yeah. you know, that that's yeah. when the contested catch stat got because a lot of people got screwed that were analytical. And then they had to start looking at this contested catch thing a little bit more closely. Um, and that's, you know, as far as long as I've been doing this, that's where that really uh, got into it. So uh, is anybody worried about Rome being jumped by any other receiver in this? Not draft even class? close. Not even close. He's in. A, I think he's in a tier by himself right now. And I don't foresee anyone. I don't foresee anyone getting up right close to him. I think I think right now there's probably a Dunze, a tier, and then another tier, and then there's actual players. Right. Like I know that sounds silly to say that, but it's just like I think there's that there's that much of a drop off for me at least. I think for I, me I would have Brian Thomas after these after a Dunze in terms of my wide receivers, but I mean I wouldn't put them in the same class. Yeah, no, I, I can't either. Um Austin? Dude, I'm, I mean, I'm a bigger analytical guy than, than both of you combined, and I am 100% on board with what you guys said, man. The, the Rome slander on Twitter pissed me off. <laughs> I, I, I just, I woke up, I was like, somebody, I don't know who chose violence, but like, <laughs> w- what are they doing, man? Like, Rome literally led all of FBS in receiving yards this year, like over 1,600 comfortably. He had 10 games of over 100 yards this season. I mean, dude, 92 catches, and he's doing it at Washington, literally, you know, the against the best defenders in the nation. Like, it, you know, there comes a time where it's like, yes, analytics do matter to a certain degree, but again, there, the, the, it comes to a certain point where it's like, okay, man, like, just turn on the film. Is the guy good? Yeah, all right, discussion over. Right. right. Well, it's it's it, it, I I look at it as I want to know all the parts and pieces. It's a roadmap, but it's not. It's not all the answers. You know, you, there's things that have to combine together. Um, and, you know, you just sometimes you have to use some common sense of, yeah, OK, but the hows and whys of the context of maybe some of those numbers. He was also surrounded by two other really, really good wide receivers mm-hmm. in Jalen Polk and, and Jalen McMillan, mm-hmm. um, which, you know, we'll talk Re- really some, good point. We'll talk about some down the road. But, you know, this year. Rome crushed it and you know oh well he should be head and shoulders above those guys I mean maybe so but it's a real it's a quarterback who can facilitate three wide receivers it's it's not a shitty quarterback who's just going to get stuck on one guy and and McMillan had a great 2022 and then an injury marred 2023 um so you know I I just I, I think that sometimes context and common sense get overlooked in some of these things and, you know, if we look back and Rome and Rome isn't any good, you can point to those things and, and say why. But I just I think like Matt was saying, I think we said it in, a, in another show that you and I recorded, Austin, like there's Roma Dunze who comes out and is that gives you that NFL wide receiver one, not talking about fantasy wide receiver one. But that I think those kind of things can go hand in hand oh, for sure. Where almost nobody else in this class underneath him offers that to me, like the, the opportunity to be like a bona fide number one wide receiver for a team. Um, you know, Brian Thomas has the frame, but he he doesn't have all the nuance and pieces that I think Rome has. I think Mitchell does too. And and Mitchell certainly has the the build, but I don't think he's really there yet to say, I'm going to go out there and be that, that dog number one, uh, wide receiver. And maybe Adunze ends up going to the bears and getting paired with, uh, DJ Moore. So he's not necessarily a a one per se, because DJ Moore is, is a G at this point. Yeah. But 
you know, I, I just that's kind of the way and the way I see a tear break there. I, I like Malik neighbors. They play the position quite a bit differently. Roman neighbors. Yeah. Um, both, I think, are going to be good in the NFL. And if, and and I believe at this point I got to, you know, probably um, submit that that neighbors should be above a But uh-huh. I mean, he, he, I, I there's there shouldn't be this much slander and and people trying to slide Troy Franklin or Brian Thomas into the same tier as him. I just, you know, so wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about that in these first kind of six picks. I know that was, it was kind of chalky, but you know, wanted to get for sure, for sure parts and pieces there. So going through the next six picks, anybody have anything else before I move on? No, I think that was, I think we covered it. All right. So then we got uh, one, seven Brock Bowers, one, eight, Troy Franklin, one, nine, Brian Thomas, Jr. One, 10, Michael Penix, one, 11, A.D. Mitchell and 112 Xavier Worthy. Um, So going back to the discussion of the tiers, we're talking tight end premium here. I think Adunze and Bowers could could potentially be in the same tier if if you wanted to. Like, are you having, would you rather have Rome or Adunze or uh, Bowers or Adunze? Ah, man. Ah. And 1.5 tight end premium. I think it's really close. Mm -hmm. Anything more than that, I'm taking Bowers. Yeah. I think that the fact that this past year we saw the depth of the of maybe these young tight ends that we've seen a little more depth. I kind of think it kind of might sway it a little bit towards a Dunze, but I mean, I don't think you can go wrong either way. Yeah, which is kind of why I was alluding. Maybe they're kind of close in a tier. In the, in oh, for the, sure. I think they're definitely in the tier. And then a nice tier break. Together. Nice break. Yeah, between the, all I mean the, the rest. I mean the draft starts at. I mean the draft starts at one oh eight. I think that's. I think that. I think everyone's been talking about that. Where the drafts, the I mean, these drafts start at 108 in in super flex tight end premium. Your thoughts, Austin? You know, I have them in the same tier, Odunze and Brock Bowers. That is, I do want to lean Bowers here. It's really close, man. This is this is really close. I mean, Bowers is he checks every box that I want, right? He and more. Uh, and Odunze ain't far from it, man. Odunze, I, I love, I love both of these prospects, right? It's, it's almost like if you have a top six, top seven, top, yeah, top seven pick in this 2024 class, you should be very happy because you're gonna walk away with a really, really good player that you can plug into your dynasty roster for a long time. I feel, I feel like this. I don't want to say can't miss prospects, but like I, I do think there's a few guys that are there in in that conversation, and I think Bowers is, he's right there, man. I, I love Bowers. I think Bowers definitely has the higher floor than Adunze does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I mean, and when we're talking 1.5, you know, we've done this multiple times, but, you know, the, the tight end five was scoring around the same points as, you know, wide receiver 13, 14, 15 in tight end premium. Or, yeah, in tight end premium this year. So, you know, they're, they're right up there with, you know, those guys can put up wide receiver one numbers. TJ Hawkinson if you know finishes the last game of the season where he goes out he's probably averaging somewhere around 17 points a game um with with 1.5 and if you get any more premium than that you know if you get the two point premium i mean the the tight end score so many points that yeah and there's there's starting to be a nice group of them so um question question for you both in non-tight end premium is bauer still 107 yeah, for me, it, for me is, I mean, you're still, there's still a, a positional advantage there somewhat. And, and and even as, you know, maybe the league evens out a little bit across the board with some, with some tight end play, like I, you, you're still going to need one of them to compete in a lot of senses. So. Awesome. Yeah, I no, I'm with you, dude. If, if anything, he's closer to the one, five, one, six range because I'm just more bullish on, on Bowers, man. Again, I'm, I'm super high on this kid and, uh, so to answer your question, yes, he's he's one one seven at the absolute latest. If you get him there, I th- I think it's a bargain. Okay, I I agree. I was just curious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So then we got Franklin and Thomas. Um, I think those guys get interchanged a good bit. They seem to be the me and Austin did a show that was kind of just the one eight kind of versus those two, which should be coming out soon. Be sure you like, subscribe, comment below so you don't miss anything. Um, and, and talking about the battle for that next tier because that's where we're kind of at right now. Anybody have? We, I think when we left there, we were both maybe leaning Franklin a little. I, I think I go back and forth almost daily. I, I, I'm maybe back to leaning Thomas a little here. I just, I just like the frame and and what could be the ceiling a little bit more. Um, as as well, you know, it's kind of we, I've been talking about. You know, I don't I don't know how many other guys. Obviously, the wide receiver one comes in a whole lot of different packages at this point in the NFL. 
Um, and Franklin could certainly be that guy, but I think he's always going to be served better as a two where Thomas could be, which doesn't mean he can't score a wide receiver one points. Um, but Thomas, I feel like could have a better career of being somebody's number one. I don't know. Anybody's let's, some thoughts are on Thomas and, uh, and Franklin. I prefer Thomas over Franklin and I'd actually throw Mitchell in that tier as well too, over Franklin as well too. How about you? Uh, uh, it's close, man. I, I do have Troy Franklin over Brian Thomas Jr. I could definitely be convinced. And, and we'll see how the combine goes. Mm-hmm. We'll see, you know, everybody's just just everything that we have left this offseason, you know, all the, all the hype. Um, you know, and I'm not fully done with my evaluations by any means. I mean, sure. we're recording this very early February. So, like, let's check back in in March April and and we'll see man because I could absolutely be persuaded but right now I do prefer the more flashy player in Troy Franklin right yeah, and, the, and I think you know Troy Franklin's probably going to test really well at the combine you know and I think Brian Thomas Jr. will, will probably test well in certain aspects as well but Troy Franklin's going to be uh, lighting a lot of those speed agility drills mm-hmm. up although he is somebody who th- whose agility isn't as as great as I think it should be for kind of what he is um so yeah he's kind of he kind of the problem with franklin is he kind of reminds me of jalen hyatt and i it's not my cup of tea mm. yeah. i'm not saying the same player just sure sure i mean he's both of those guys i think are going to get good draft capital at this point it seems pointed that direction sure um so uh anyway we can keep it moving we got penix there at the 110 uh, you know this is a, this is a, a penix podcast we, we're we're big supporters over here at least uh, Jay Wayne apparently is because that's who he took. Big and, Penix and, energy and here. Big Penix energy. And, you know, just I was watching McMillan and Polk today and I just I don't understand what everybody's so upset about with Penix. Like, yeah, I think it's ca- because of, I think it's because of the national championship game. Right. I think. I, well, but the problem is you go to the you go to the semifinal. It's, right. Well, it's, the game before that, he was like, oh, he's a, he's a top 10 pick. And then yeah. in one game, he went back to like, oh, he's second. Third Recency round bias. Best. Well, he's got a weird delivery. And he I'm like, a, he does have a weird he delivery, does. but I don't. But I, I'm just saying he has a weird delivery. Right. Right. I'm not saying I'm just saying it's a thing. He's got a weird delivery. It's just like, you know, wide receivers come in all different packages nowadays, doing a lot of different things. Wide receiver mechanics and wide receiver, how they do or uh, why, uh, quarterback mechanics and how they do things is far less of a thing that anybody cares about I think anymore can you get the ball where it needs to be um, is really all that matters and I think he does that really well um, you know I, there's, there's a lot of things out there that I read but especially from Twitter scouts that I'm like I don't think you really watched a whole lot you just heard somebody else <laughs> say that and that, I don't I, I, that, that, that seems like the complete opposite of what I've found and I've you know somehow I became a Washington Huskies fan over the last two years they're just they were a lot of fun to watch and they were hanging out with big D and they were on later so it's like it's easy you know the kids go to bed I can watch this with my full undivided attention and they've been a lot of fun so what I mean you got those three wide receivers (laughs) they're not going to be going forward right well no (laughs) probably not uh but where where do you guys have Michael Penix Jr. going in the NFL draft where do you think he's realistically going to go give me a range like 10 to 15, 15 no, to 20. No, I don't. I, I, to I, I think somewhere he's somewhere between 20 to 45. I, I just. Oh, that's a big gap. Okay. Yeah. I I think people are going to get scared because of the knee. I think it's because it's not because it's once. It's because it's twice. Right. So the, but, the one ACL is not an issue. The problem is it's the same ACL twice. Right. But, you know, if it really depends on how we're going to get medical checks and everything and how it comes back. Yeah. You know, so we shall see. And I know some people are just out on on him. And, you know, if J.J. gets the draft capital and Nick's get the draft capital, and of course, we need to we need to push Penix down some. But, you know, I think there is there's too much. I've said this a million times, but at this point, I'll say it a million times more. There's too much need out there at the quarterback position. Uh, where I do think there's a good chance that he can go in the first round still. No, um, for sure. And I, that's why I had him. That's why I said at 20. Right. You know, the Vikings need one. The Broncos need one. The Raiders need one. Those that's that's pick 11 through 13. Uh, the Saints could certainly use one. The Seahawks could potentially use one. Um, so, you know, there's I mean, Rams, even could, the Rams, Rams at 19. Yeah, yeah. You I've, know, just I've seen mock drafts with them taking Bo Nix. Steelers at 20. Yeah. You yeah. know, that's. Ugh. Yeah. Poor Steelers. Miami, if they're not sold on Tua, which everybody and their mother isn't, I think he's fine. I think he's but, fine. <laughs> you know, I just there's there's some you know twenty six the Bucks that you know you got Baker, but who knows? So it's just 
there, there are some op- the Lions at 29. I don't think you go quarterback there at this point, but no, yeah. um, you certainly could. I just in the middle of the first round, if it get, if it gets through there and then gets past the Steelers, the, maybe uh, then you, you always have the, you always have that possibility of someone pulling tra- a, pulling a for in. Lamar to get that fifth year option. Right. So. Um, so you know we'll we'll see as as they, I think the Minnesota Vikings would be a smash landing spot. For sure, Michael agreed. Penix. It looks great in purple already. Right. So and the style of play and what they want to do. And they already supporting cast is awesome. He walks right into a really well tailor made situation. So, draft capital will dictate the quarterbacks how they get drafted. I'm going to continue to have Michael Penix at the back of the first round in these rookie mocks, and then Bo Nix and McCarthy as they get into the first round draft capital. I will gladly swap them into that. You know, I'm not. They're not going to move any higher than kind of that 110 spot probably for me. One nine, uh, most likely, you know, even with the capital, uh, but. You know, I don't dislike either one of those guys. I just, I don't, I haven't seen as much good stuff that I've seen from Penix that are making big time, big boy throws. Especially with McCarthy. I mean, I feel like guys. McCarthy. The is, tools are there for McCarthy. But, it seems. I mean, I mean, but is is he anything more than a game manager? Right. We don't. We just don't know. Yeah. Harbaugh says well, Har- he is, but Har- why wouldn't Harbaugh <laughs> yeah, say? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, so you know, I we don't get to see if, if Harbaugh can you know put his money where his mouth is because they got Herbert. So there's no reason for, for them to do anything. But yeah, you know, I think I like McCarr. I don't hate McCarthy. I think he's got all the tools. I've seen him make good throws, but I mean, shit, he goes through games with under 20 attempts, under 15 attempts sometimes, you know, or 15 completions. National championship was, I think he threw it 18 times, 15 I, completions. I, I, like in the Penn state game, they, they, they only had one, they only had one passing attempt after half, halfway through this. I mean, from the uh, halfway through the second quarter on. Right. So like all those guys, str- I mean, 30 straight. Is that right? 30 yeah. straight attempts? Something against like Penn that. State? Yeah, I think it was 32, Insane, 33. Dude. Yeah. They could have put me back there, dude. I, <laughs> right. I think I think Michael Penix Jr. is going to be a first-round pick. I think Bo Nix, honestly, I, I really believe he's going to be a first-round pick. I'm, I'm talking to NFL draft. And I think the QB6 is going to be J.J. McCarthy. And I think that's where the conversation really begins, man. I don't. I kind of think J.J. is going to fall to early to mid-round two. I think we're going to see five quarterbacks in the first round of the NFL draft. Do you, would you guys agree? I think Where honestly, I think right now, I think that Knicks goes hot, the highest of the three of them. Really? Yeah, I, okay. I, think, I, I yeah. think that there's. I get it. I understand it. I think there's a chance that all three of them go, or maybe just one of them go. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, and then yeah. The, all, the other two, or, or all three, go in the second round. Which you know, whatever, that's fine. If you can convince all those teams that they don't need a quarterback in the first round, you know, I I don't necessarily think that really. Any of them should necessarily even be taken in the first round per se, because there is, mm-hmm. you know, a little bit of yeah buts with each of them. Again, I like Penix the most. I think he's the most for where the NFL is right now, attacking vertically and getting downfield. I think he's he's that kind of that kind of player for me. But Nix and McCarthy offer you, you know, the athleticism upside, which Penix isn't a statue back there, which, again, I think some people get it twisted like he can. I was just watching it today, man. He moved around and made plenty of throws on the run. Um, and He doesn't get sacked a lot. His sack rate was one of the lowest in the country, the lowest in, in history, I think. It was real, like two point something percent or six percent on certain things. It was, it was, it's crazy numbers. Um, but he slides around in the pocket really well. Yeah, he misses throws, but guess what? Watching Jaden, watching neighbors and uh, Brian Thomas, Jaden Daniels misses a lot of throws too. They all miss throws. That's just kind of how it goes. I think it was amplified with with Penix a little bit because all eyes were on him. Uh, but you know. Washington did their job and made sure Bo Nix didn't get another shot. Um, and, and J.J. came out there and beat Penix. But how much did he can? He had two or three plays in that game where it was like, oh, yeah, that was that was on McCarthy. That was that was really well done. Uh, but other than that, uh, I'm, I'm sticking with my guy Penix. So let, let's keep it moving here. We'll go to A.D. Mitchell. Um, so and, and, and Xavier Worthy here, both the Texas guys. So you said you had AD a little closer to Franklin and Thomas at that one eight one nine. I'm going. I think I got Worthy right now as as my next wide receiver up after Adunze. I've been really digging Worthy right now. Um, you know, bit bit different than AD Mitchell, of course. Yeah. You know, just the way, play style and build. And I think that the the analytical community is going to favor Worthy because of the fact that he had such that great freshman year. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I feel like Worthy's kind of he's he's there, but he's just like. I don't want to say he's regressed, but I just feel like it's been he just has kind of just kind of just meandered kind of throughout his last two years in in college. So he didn't continue the ascent. Correct. Yeah. He just kind of plateaued a bit, which which, I mean, I guess isn't a bad thing. But at the same time, I don't want to see a guy peak as a freshman in college. And, and, you know, so just going back and I just 
I feel like he's he's obviously not going to be a wide receiver one in in you know what he does in the NFL, but I feel like he can be a big addition to somebody who needs a chain moving kind of guy who can get you vertically, who can just he does a lot he's, of different things. He's kind of like Jordan Addison in that same kind of in, in that same kind of he's not the same player, but I feel like he's in that same style of play. Yeah. I'm, where he's not or he's probably not going to be a one. I mean, and obviously, especially where Addison's at now, but I feel like he could be that second that high end wide receiver two on a team. Where the to, for me, I prefer Mitchell because I feel like he has the higher upside. Because I think Mitchell does have the ability to be a, a team's wide receiver one, where I don't think Worthy has that. And you probably have to throw some of that in the mix of Worthy, you know, Mitchell coming over and, and yeah. maybe hurting a little some of, of, of what Mitchell can do or what Worthy can do. How about you, Austin? What are your thoughts on, on the Texas duo here? Oh, man. I think I've kind of cooled down on both Texas receivers relative to a few months ago. I think I was more bullish back then. And I still like these guys, right? Don't 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 get me wrong. But, um, you know, we, we saw Worthy had nearly a thousand yards as a, as a true 18 year old freshman, mm-hmm. man. He had a target share of like over 30 percent, 12 touchdowns. I mean, like we got a glimpse of his upside, right, of his ceiling. We knew that this kid could play. And I think that it's still in him. Um, but Matt's right, man. Like he's definitely chilled out over the past past few years and it's not what we wanted to see but it's reality it's what happened and you know we saw him dominate like third ranked Alabama we saw him put up big numbers against Oklahoma Oklahoma State Kansas just some ranked teams that he he played some really good ball against had some great games uh, but I do prefer worthy to answer your question over AD Mitchell it's pretty close um, let's see how they test I'm, I'm afraid that Worthy is going to win a lot of people over if he runs like a four two nine, which could happen. And uh, I'll tell you what, like I love the combine. It's a little, it, it's fairly, t- it's overrated. Like I, it's <laughs> overrated in in a lot of ways, man. Like it's good because we get new content, and I think that's also it's like a double edged knife, right? It, that that makes people get a little too hyped on some of these prospects when in reality, you know, man, you, you got to look at production, you got to look at the film as well. My biggest problem with the combine is the double counting. Like, oh, yeah, we, we already knew this guy's fast. And then you bump him up because he ran fast. I'm like, <laughs> we already knew he was fast. Mm-hmm. Why are we bumping him up again mm-hmm. because he was fast? Like, yeah. that's. Well, and, you know, there's there's certain there's certain thresholds and things that you hit for certain guys that, that can make you. I think it's more of a move you down rather than move you up. Com, the combine. Yeah, I think it, it, I think that's fair. I mean, I'd rather watch the gauntlet than than watch them than than have them. How do you than watch the forty? Yeah, right. I want to see that flexibility. I want to mm-hmm. see your your hands. Right. I mean, the, I just the forty is just really not all that important. Yeah, I mean, look it, at I mean Puka Nakua. Know. I mean Cooper Cup both ran in the four sixes and right. They're some of the best receivers in the NFL. So it certainly doesn't hurt to be fast. I mean, I'm not. No, gonna, no, I'm not going to for be sure. Upset. But I mean, look at um. Uh, Shit, what's the guy's name went to the Bengals? I can't remember his name. Cause Jamar he, Chase? No, 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 no. The guy who was like ran like the 4 2 John Ross. John Ross. John right. Ross. Yeah, John Ross is fast, but that's literally all he is. He's just fast. Right. Yeah, I mean, you got to be able to do those other things. And I, I will say that I'm, you know, a lot of the times I do, I do like the style of play that guys like Worthy have, uh, where they're, they seem to be able to do a lot of different things for you. And I like that moving over to the next level, unless you're just a dominant stud and and ad mitchell certainly has the body type and i think all the agility and athletics and all those things to to do that um i guess maybe i just haven't seen it for as long as for sure I have no from, for sure i think that's definitely fair yeah so I mean, he didn't really do any i mean he did a little bit hit at the first year at georgia but he did nothing last year right uh but so yeah i mean I, i've I, I like i like all i like all three guys really all four guys uh that are at that are at Texas right now uh, that are all coming out and they're all in this draft. So anybody got anything else on these back six of the first round? Austin, would you have, would you move, would you have anyone else, any other wide receivers over Mitchell or worthy? Um, I'm pulling up my rankings right now. The only other guy that I think is really in this conversation is the guy you took Ke- at two five is Keon Coleman. Yeah, that's yeah. what I figured. Yeah. He's the only guy I, I mean, deserves to, uh, you know, I have I, Tez Walker. That was like, uh, uh, Tez Walker and Xavier Leggett are the next guys that come to mind. Just just to tell you yeah. where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, apparently Tez did not have a great week at the Senior Bowl. No, mm-hmm. and yeah, you know, 
we can we can talk a little senior bowl here to uh, we'll, we'll go through this next two re- this next uh half of the second round we got jonathan brooks at 2-1 we got lad mcconkey at 2-2 we got marshawn lloyd at 2-3 we got brandon allen or braylon allen rather at 2-4 keon coleman at 2-5 i mean then, i'm not a keon coleman fan but at 2-5 that's steel that's, yeah let's <laughs> that, go that's easy money right there <laughs> and then Jalen polk at 2-6 so we can we can break digest a little bit of this here uh, like we were talking a little bit about all those Texas guys. So there's there's Brooks. That's the third Texas guy. So I think he's most people's RB1. But these two guys at 2-2 two, two and 2-3 two, made some noise at the Senior Bowl and have vaulted themselves up. That's the highest I've spots. seen. That's the highest I've seen McConkie go. Yeah. And I think McConkie's descent or ascent is not over. Sure. Uh, I think we're going to be talking about him in the mix and in, in even potentially up there as, as far as the 8 and the 9 by the time this is all done. Yeah. I, I think don't, he's I don't probably going to get the capital that those two guys get, guy, but, but yeah, sometimes that, you know, we're splitting, you know, I know, I know everybody likes the first round versus second round capital or whatever, but you know, I think McConkie right now is, is out there, you know, really, really rising up, got a little banged up this year, but came to the senior bowl and just dominated in, in every way, shape or form and did, did all the things that you want to see uh, from a receiver that's in that position um to be able to do so jonathan brooks i think I've, right now is is my rb1 yeah is, is it everybody's rb1 right now yep yep even with the injury so you know i think he'll he'll continue to ascend up as well and 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 kind of be that running back that can make his way into the first round here you don't think so no i don't think so hmm. i think the only shot we had at a wide at running back going in the first round was travion mm-hmm no, 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 no. First round of rookie drafts. Oh, not, yes. Not the actual NFL yes, draft. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Sorry. Yes. I that. could see him going uh, probably the highest he's going to go is 11 or 12. You see you see those playoff teams, 110, 111, 112 that have their own picks. Mm-hmm. They're saying, hey, yeah. let, let me get this running back here. You know, maybe I'm loaded at wide receiver or whatever. I mean, you know, yeah. I know I don't necessarily want to draft for need per se or uh, draft for positional or whatever, but draft yeah. for need. So, um but I, I think Brooks is going to end up, you know, probably in the first round of a lot of super flex rookie box or rookie drafts rather. Um, so McConkey getting some senior bowl love and then Marshawn Lloyd really getting a lot of love here. And, and I liked him, uh, but I liked him at South Carolina. At, at, yeah. 212, oh, 3 one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I liked him back half of the second round. And maybe this is just, you know, a one off because of, we're excited about the senior bowl. And again, this is, you know, when people watch these videos, they get all bent out of shape about who went where and where. There's no way this guy could do. It's like, have you ever been in a real draft? Like, it takes one guy to yeah, take, you take, to take Marshawn post, Lloyd at two three, more, yeah. and then that's it. You yeah, know, and yeah. if you ha- you just haven't been in enough drafts, if you haven't seen that. Now, if we're ranking these guys, you can get upset about it. But again, those are my personal rankings mm. versus your personal rankings, and that's what makes this game work. Yeah. Um, so, Marshawn Lloyd, you got anything uh, to to talk about? Some talking points with him, Austin. Yeah, I I like Marshawn Lloyd. I'm not infatuated with him, but man, when 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 he when he was interviewed and he was like, "Dude, I'm the best running back in this class." I don't know why it kind of got me jacked up. I was like, (laughs) "Shoot!" It's like, dude, I I'm like I'm starting to gravitate towards this player. Like I I'm I'm starting to get more in on him. Just I just liked his interview. I don't know. I thought it was likable. Um, but but there is a lot that. I think most people enjoy about Marshawn Lloyd, right? Like, I know he's not necessarily the most physically imposing, the biggest running back, right? He's like five nine, a hundred and or two hundred and ten pounds, mm-hmm. but but like that's fine. That can work. I I do love the fact that, and I've mentioned this before, Caleb literally handpicked him, man. Like he he was, I, th- I think he was talking to some of the scouts and was like, dude. I want Marshawn Lloyd to be on our roster, and and you know they the scouts they literally ended up bringing him into the roster it, it reminded me of Patrick Mahomes I've mentioned this before but it reminded me of the Patrick Mahomes situation getting Clyde Edwards Hilaire mm-hmm. and um, I just found that interesting that Caleb Williams like truly helped land Marshawn Lloyd he, he vouched for him so for for what it's worth um, I just I never think it's a bad thing when the 101 is is vouching for you right and and he, he was impressive right like he had 7.1 yards per carry uh, Marshawn Lloyd uh, overall I wish his co- collegiate production was better um, but but it's okay, man. We'll we'll see what he can do at the next level. He's here. I think he's going to be what a, a day three pick at this point. Would you agree? Uh, I I mean maybe he sneaks into the back end of day two, but you're probably right there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just don't understand what South Carolina was doing. Whether they why they weren't playing him more. I never under right. never understood why he wasn't getting more time. I mean, we saw how good of a player he was this year. 
with at USC. I mean, obviously there's a lot more talent around him at USC than there was uh, up in Columbia, but still it just didn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, I, I think the problem with me with Lloyd is he's probably not going to be, he hasn't shown his ability to be a pass catcher. Now I know that mm-hmm. it, it is what it is. He was close there. He had 18 catches, but mm-hmm. it just, that worries me a little bit that he has, he's never broken a thousand yards. It, you know what I mean? It's just, what do we do here? So, right. I think he's, he, he's got a, he's got a really, really good skill set. It just hasn't all shown out on the, yeah. And I think he's smart for leaving now. I mean, this is his best chance to be, to be a top five running back drafted it would, right. would be this year. If, if he's going to do it, not probably oh, not yeah. next year. Yeah. So stock that a little. 25 class whole do that. 25, the running back, they look so it's good. Ridiculous. And well, four of them play in, and four of them play at two schools. Well, right after this, we're going to be jumping into a way too early 2025 rookie mock. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Marshawn Lloyd getting a little love, getting, getting, you know, probably a little too excited from the senior bowl. I'd like to see him maybe down a little bit further, but I do like Marshawn Lloyd. Next running back up here is, is Braylon Allen. Very polarizing. Um, seems like, you know, he either gets just absolutely dumped on or people are like, oh, you're sleeping on, on Braylon Allen. I know this is somebody that you were hot and heavy on and maybe cooled a little bit, Austin. Uh, what do you think about Braylon Allen? Yeah, so in this draft that we did, he went at the 2-4 man. I think this is appropriate. I, th- I think this is fine value. Um, in, in my rankings, I have him at 2-4 as well. So it's cool to see that uh, people agree with me. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, I, I think Braylon Allen, I, I just, you know, I'm a size this man. I love the size. Uh, I don't necessarily think he's going to come be just as fast as what people claim he is like people claim he, he's running 440 40 time which is like 92nd percentile i don't think it's going to be the case and if he does dude holy cow yeah i mean the, i mean i mean, the, the, I mean that speed score is going to be ridiculous regardless of what he runs yeah yeah and and if he does run anything remotely close to a 44 flat he's going to shoot up in not only dynasty drafts but but in in rook drafts too and uh, I'm sorry, the NFL draft as well is what I meant to say, uh, but but he's I mean this kid young still too right yeah I think yeah he's like twenty yeah yes he was playing at 17 years old dude and yeah. crushing Ohio State so there is a lot to like but um, he did kind of tail off a little bit like he was hotter earlier a lot of these prospects prospects were hotter earlier in their collegiate career and um, it just kind of makes you wonder man it's like what happened what what's happened over the past year or two you know what like did defenses just have more tape on them like why did they tail off. I think Allen's been banged up, hasn't he? Was he banged up last year a little bit? Co- correct. I was just kind of referring to like him and like Xavier Worthy, just in general. Like yeah. when players, I mean, you could even throw Marshawn Lloyd in there. I mean, I think he yeah. was a five-star recruit. Yeah, I don't. I don't I haven't dove into everything on on all these running backs yet. I've been chewing my way through the receivers, and I'm I've, I've got I know a decent amount about these running backs, but it's a long process of getting through them all. So I just I know that people don't like that the production tailed off. For Allen from one season to another, um, or even half a season to another half of the season, or you know, how, kind of however that went, um, so seems to be very polarizing. But I think he's still worth a shot, and I think he's going to test really well. So um, as we go on, we'll be we'll be breaking down you know these running back groupings and ranking them, and and we're going to get all sorts of new information at the combine and all that jazz. Uh, but then you got Keon Coleman that you took at two five who. You know, when we're talking about these wide receivers, you talk about Franklin and Thomas and who can be the next guy. And, you know, maybe maybe I don't love it because they, they can't be they don't necessarily maybe profile as as that that alpha number one kind of guy. Keon Coleman is, is the guy who kind of profiles like that. But there's just some red flags that scare you off a little bit. But this two, at two five, that's crazy. I'll take that all day long. Yeah, agreed. I didn't expect him to land here. I mean, I was actually like, wow, Braylon's going to fall to me because Keon's going to go here. And then the exact opposite happened. I was like, holy cow. All right, I'll take, I, 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 again, I, you know, this is one of the players that, Keon Coleman, that is, that I'm cool with taking the gamble on. Casey, we've talked about this before. I'm willing to take that risk. But that's at the very, very end of the first, at, at the absolute earliest. So for him to fall 2-5, it, you know, it was just a slam dunk. I mean, look, here, I, I, and I'll keep it quick about Keon, right? Here's the good, right? You can't teach size. Coleman's got an abundance of mm-hmm. that, okay? You can't teach speed. Check that box off as well. 
Uh, and he has just true raw athleticism and I would say underappreciated footwork. And now the bad about Keon Coleman, and it's simple, man. It's it's the separation, right? And and that might be the most important thing about being a wide receiver is separating. It, it's definitely up there, okay? And the fact that he's literally 20 years old and can't separate, it's okay, right? Like, that's not the end of the world. This kid is still developing as a prospect. He's far from polished. And that's okay because literally all these kids are, are far from polished. So... Uh, it is what it is, man. Uh, but yes, two oh five. You got to pull trigger on Keon. Yeah, I mean the 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 highlight film of Keon Coleman is awesome, and then when you get into the detail of game to game, you start to see you know a lot of little bare spots disappearing in chunks of games here and there. But when when he does show up and show out, it's it's super I mean, impressive. Talk about a coming out party he had against LSU. Right, right. Was oh, that the first game? Of that the was season? Monday Night Football. That yeah. was like, yeah. they, uh, Correct me, was that Monday night or Sunday yeah. night, the first game of the year? I, I just know it was week one, and yeah. it was I three think it touchdowns. Was, I think it might have been Monday night. Yeah, and just, he then you know, kind of was just, the whole season was just kind of ebbs and flows. Yeah. He either have no him. touchdowns or two. <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, so, you know, it's definitely going to be, you know, at, at the end of the first, I'm down to take the shot, but if you're going to let Keon slip a little further at that point, I mean, you, like I said, you're, yeah. if, if you're taking him at 110 to 112, you're probably a championship roster, so you could t- potentially afford to take the gamble. Uh, and then if he slips into the second round, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with, with taking a shot there. So Jalen Polk at 2-6, I think that's probably going to be a little early for him. Yeah. I actually prefer McMillan um, over um, Polk, but, you know, I, I, Polk's probably going to get the better draft capital. Uh, but I, I thought that was a little early on on Polk there for for two six. Agreed. I um, probably would have taken every person that went in the second round ahead of Polk. Agreed. So, <laughs> so the next six guys are Bo Nix, McCarthy, Blake Corum, Trey Benson, Estime, and JT Sanders. So those are the that's the rest of this. We got a two round mock here. Um, we talked about Bo and and McCarthy here when we were talking about Penix. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. I would probably take pretty much all the rest of that second round over Polk plus. At least Bucky Irving, um, and maybe even Tez Walker. And and you know Tez had a rough day at the, or a rough outing at the Senior Bowl. Um, a, a, supposedly I wasn't there, but from what I watched and what I saw, had some good reps, had some bad reps. It was just kind of a little all over the place. Uh, wasn't winning at some of the rates that some of the other guys may have been. Um, so, you know, little 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 bummer there. And then Leggett is is another guy who came out and has the has, it was fifth year breakout or whatever and nobody likes you know the analytics aren't going to like that but you know once again we're talking about a you know your profile of your stereotypical one kind of guy in the league and he he checks those box now he came in a little short from what they were i think he was only six one yeah or something like that but still you know just extremely fast and is a menace with the ball in his hands he had small hands too he does have small hands i think uh but it didn't stop he was really good in contested situations he's he played uh, the bully you know character really well um and he was just he's uh, yeah super I, fast yeah when Ra- when Rad- when spencer radler needed to needed to make a play he was looking for xavier legit oh for sure and is it legit or legit i don't know <laughs> I don't know. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't gotten the phonetic pronunciation. It's pronounced H N. I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. So those would we, be no- notable guys that maybe didn't go here. I love Bucky, and I think Bucky's going to end up being one of these running backs that gets a lot of hype and ends up. N- there's no chance he's not going to go up in the in the beginning of the second round. I don't think because I think this is the second round is going to be a lot of running backs. Um, and you know, I like Blake Corum just fine but Bucky Irving is is a little more exciting I think than than Blake Corum he he gives you the receiving upside yeah um you know some people don't love Blake I think Blake Corum can be you know a decent player at the next level Trey Benson has been a favorite of mine he's probably the the RB two or three in this class for me um lot lot to like there gives you that prototypical workhorse style but Mm -hmm. can catch Mm -hmm. um that has proven to be catch. there's i think a lot of these guys can catch um but has been proven to be you know a a, a good catcher and he he has a knee injury as well transferred from oregon and but he's got pretty good speed and and pretty good uh elusiveness so like trey benson there at 210 and then estime has been you know you or i or somebody taking him at the end of these drafts and i I I would love i I love him here i love him here so if you're in need of running backs, you can you could probably load up on the on the second round in your rookie drafts here and really clean up on I think some really talented running backs. They're not none of them have like those elite 
explosive, crazy traits. One of them might have elite speed or something like maybe maybe Braylon Allen or they all kind of have elite parts and pieces. But I think a lot of them are going to be, you know, guys who score fantasy points in the league. Um, and of course, there'll be some duds. There's going to be some duds all through this thing. It's you yeah. know, that's what one it is. The, one of these guys goes in the first round is not going to be is is gonna, is going to bust. It's just, right. It's what happens. And you know, half of the quarterbacks that go in the first round are going to bust. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. if you're playing the percentages, which is kind of what analytics is all about. So the, again, the roadmap to uh, trying to not you know fuck it up, um, you know, is is a good way to use analytics and marry it with the film. And I think you you got the best you know chance of making the most educated decision you can you have professionals at this who can't get it right um if they still haven't figured it out and if i think if analytics were the the end all be all you'd need about four analytical guys and they you know you wouldn't need anybody else uh so everybody's still trying to figure those parts and pieces out every year there's another piece to the puzzle of figuring out what combinations and what thresholds of things you know, they, they, maybe this this guy was hitting it and this guy missed. Well, why'd he miss? Well, if we adjust these filters to this, then, you know, oh, well, it gives us these names now. And these guys are all have been wide receiver two or better in the league once or twice. So oh, now we have a new threshold to hit. And that's just kind of how, you know, the, the analytics work. And, you know, you go back through time and baseball and basketball have all gone through this. Now they've made it very unwatchable to me. Baseball and basketball, that is analytics. Uh, it's, it's not that much fun to watch. Uh, but I don't think you're going to get the same. It's not possible to kind of do that to football, I don't think, in, in the way that they have in baseball where it's all about launch angle and home runs. There's no small ball being played really anymore. And in basketball, it's let's just jack up as many threes because <laughs> they're worth three points, obviously, you know, sure. But, you know, low post play and, and you know, the those dominant inside players, you know, not necessarily the athleticism is off the chart in basketball. So it's a lot of fun to watch when you get to the playoffs and you're playing some defense. But, you know. I don't know that that can necessarily happen in football, uh, but I think it's I think I think like you said, I think it's part of it. I don't think it can be all of it. Right. So I'm on the, I'm on the last pick. I took JT Sanders there. I think he's the tight end too, undisputed. I think he's awesome. Um, Heard some rumblings about him. What What's that? He was a bit of a shithead at the Ooh, at his I don't like um, that. Uh, bit of a shithead at his All Star Bowl game. Mm, I don't love that. Don't love that. Was not was, did not want to participate in team meetings and was hard was was um, uh, being difficult in the in meetings with teams. Mm. I don't like that, but I do like his play on the field. Oh yeah, uh, he, and he's, and my source <laughs> said freak athlete. So yeah, yeah. But he's what, he what's, is, go, what's going on between the ears? Right, which is is I've said it multiple times as I've gone on in this. Going, what's going on between the ears is dictates a lot for me of whether you're gonna how you're gonna you know. You can be the biggest freak you want. And sometimes that'll just take you everywhere you need to go and it doesn't matter. But a lot of the times you need to not be a shithade and be wanting to participate and, and get better and be a good teammate and, and the want to be great. Um, and it's all those little details that make the great ones great. See Ebron, um, comma, Eric. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> um, so I took Sanders there. I really like him. We're talking tight end premium. I think he's the tight end two in this class. Um, I think he's. I mean, I mean, even even everything that said. I mean, I think he's still worth a shot taking him at the end of the second round. Yeah, but Bucky was in consideration here for okay. me for sure. But I'm I'm a tight end. I love taking the tight end. So uh, Austin, anything before we wrap this up? Yeah. So I know it's only February, man. We are still very early in this process, but there's not a world that exists where Trey Benson falls to the 210 and JT Sanders falls to the 212. Yeah. It's not going to happen, man. Both of these guys are going to go so much earlier. They should. They're great players. Casey, the JT Sanders pick's got to be the easiest pick ever, man. Mm -hmm. At the 212, I mean, we're talking about a guy who's only let up three sacks as a blocker in the past two years. He just had huge production as a redshirt freshman and he separates and he blocks really, really well. So he, he allegedly runs like, dude, like close to four, five, five, four, six range. Like he's, he's got wheels, great size. I mean, his kid's 20 years old. J, JT Sanders. Absolutely. Right now, in my opinion, should be the dynasty to uh, tight end two in this class. He's, he's a good player, man. This kid could play. Yeah. He's, he's, he's got very functional speed. He looks very natural out there when he's playing the position. The hands are really good. Um, you know, just a lot of times when Texas needed something big. I was just going to say that. There were, I mean, there was times in the Texas game where he was the wide receiver one over yeah. two guys. Yeah. who We just drafted <laughs> right. 12 picks ahead of him. Right. So. Yeah. Right. And that's, you know, that's really, you know, sometimes 
you can't really quantify things like that in a stat, um, which I'm sure they there somebody out there is saying yes, you can. But I just when you actually when you're watching the game and you know you watching the the all 22s and and all that stuff is all well and good to see how somebody moves and how they manipulate defenders and and how they you know get off of this and get off of that. But there's something to be said to, to watching the actual game and the flow of the game and how it's going. And JT Sanders was just one of those guys who was always there when you needed something. Um, and and that, that's kind of hard to show you in all 22 tape. And, all you know, you can you can get all the athletic stuff from him there. But watching the the actual games of him playing him uh, and, and where he comes up in the spots that he comes up in and, and just what he does on downs and distances is is uh, tough to quantify sometimes, but I, I think he's he's pretty elite at at, at those at those things. And I, I saw uh, somebody today, uh, Brett Coleman, maybe say that he didn't he didn't think that the the gap between Brock Bowers and J T Sanders was all that big. Um, so, you know, we're at that point of the draft cycle anyway. <laughs> um, so, anybody got anything else? Let's let's get let's get the uh, the FF out of here. Austin. I'm good, man. I'm I'm excited. We we got a good episode coming up here. I'm I'm really excited to talk about some of these late round dart throws, these third round, fourth round picks. I think we're gonna find a few hits in it too, man. Oh, sure. So so always I'm looking do. forward to it. Matthew, good to have you back. Good to see you guys. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. You can hit us up on the Patreon, five dollar holler. Get you three extra episodes of of uh, of us a month. Uh, you get access to the Discord, which we do a lot of slow mocks in, and we've been doing live shows um, on. S- every other Sunday or so. This Sunday we will be, well, I don't know when this is coming out, but we'll be off on the Super Bowl and then back on the 18th and we're going to be doing live, uh, sometimes rookie mocks, startup mocks. Best way to get into those is is through the Patreon, but we throw some out on the Twitters. You can follow us at the FF Dynasty to grab an extra spot or two there. Uh, So we very much appreciate you. Be sure to tune in. We got another show coming up with some names you need to know here uh, that we didn't quite get to in these two rounds and going to be a lot of fun. So very much appreciate you. We'll catch you next time. Peace.